This is the complete beginner's guide for how to use the go-to and I've left chapter markers in the description below so you can jump to specific sections. So let's get straight to it. Now place your camera in the charge case and plug the charge case into a charge plug using the included USB-C cable. The red light will come on whilst charging and it will turn off once fully charged. Once it's charged, you can wake it up by pressing the record or the mode button. There are several ways that you can shoot with your go-to and the first way we're gonna look at is how to use it while keeping it in the case. When it's in the case, you can either use the integrated tripod by pulling the legs gently out from the charge case body. And the legs are really fragile, so I would only use this on a stable flat surface when there isn't any wind. You can also hand hold the case by holding the lower half of the case and if you place your thumb here on the case and point it towards yourself, it's an ideal way to hold it for vlogging. You can also use the quarter inch thread to attach it to a selfie stick or another mount. While it's in the case, you can cycle through the menu and select your preferred shooting mode by pressing the mode button, which is the button on the right. If you want to change the specific settings of each shooting mode, then you can press and hold the record button. So if we select Pro Video, for example, and then we press and hold the record button, it will bring up a sub menu where we can change the frame rate, the color profile, the field of view, and the resolution. And the really good thing here is that once you're in the sub menu, you can then access the sub menu for every other shooting mode. So from the top of this sub menu where it says Pro Video, press the record button once again, and it will scroll through the other sub menus for the other shooting modes. So the accessible menus on the GoTo are pretty vast and you may need to re-watch this section of the video to get your head around how to access the menus and the sub-menus. There is also a separate settings menu where you can turn on and off anti-flicker. This will help you avoid flickering monitors or lights and also you can turn on and off wind reduction as well. You can set the auto standby mode from 80 seconds, 120 seconds or 180 seconds. And here you can also switch between standard and high bit rate and I would keep this on high for better image quality. You can also turn off the LED lights here and this is useful if you're filming near glass or at night where the flashing light will be noticeable in your shot. And this is also where you can format your memory or do a master reset of all the settings. Once you've set your shooting mode and changed your settings, you can then use the record button to start recording in any of the video modes or to take a photo in any of the photo modes. And you can stop recording at any time by pressing the record button again. The other thing to mention here is that the charge case LCD screen displays the battery level for the charge case on the left and the battery level for the camera on the right. And it also tells you how much is left on the internal memory. The internal memory is 32 gigabytes, but only has a usable memory of 28 gigabytes. The second way to use the charge case is as a remote control for the camera. Open up the charge case and the charge case should connect to your go-to automatically if they've been paired before. Now press the record or the mode button to wake the go-to up. You can now use the menu exactly as before when the camera was in the case. And to turn the case off, you simply close it. The Bluetooth connection between the case and the camera is automatic and it has a range of approximately 10 meters. If you're using your camera on a remote control car or on your pet for example, I wouldn't use the charge case as a remote control. I would start and stop recording manually directly from the camera. And this is because it can go out of range too easily. Using the charge case as a remote control is designed for those situations where you have a constant, consistent distance between yourself holding the remote control and the camera. So using it on a tripod or in your car or on a helmet mount or something like that. The third way of using the go-to is independently out of the case. And this is my preferred way of using it and in my opinion, the easiest way. In order to shoot this way, you first need to jump into the settings in the app. So let's do that first. So first take your camera out of the charge case and long press the button on the front of the go-to for a couple of seconds. And this button can be referred to as the action button or the record button. Ensure that your Bluetooth and your Wi-Fi are turned on on your phone. Open up the Insta360 app and press the camera icon at the bottom of the screen. To connect for the first time, you have to press the action record button on the camera to confirm or click the tick icon that will come up on the remote control. Once you are connected, press the cog settings icon in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. And now go to button settings. Here you'll see options that can be changed for quick capture as well as single and double press action button settings. 
quick captures for when the camera is off and you press the button on the camera and then the camera will turn on, start recording for the duration that you've set and then turn off again. You can set quick capture for a single press by going to quick cap one. Select quick cap one and then select the shooting mode here. You can choose between standard photo, interval, night shot, star lapse, video, pro video, HDR video, time lapse, time shift, and slow motion. So for this example, we'll choose pro video. Now you can change the specs of that mode by selecting video specs. So you can change the frame rate, the resolution, and the aspect ratio. So 16 by nine or nine by 16. And finally, you can change the capture time. So this is how long the camera will record for once you press the record action button. And once the camera reaches that time, it will then stop recording and then turn off. And you can now do the same for Quick Cap 2. Quick Cap 2 activates when you double press the record action button when the camera is off. You can also change the shooting mode here for when the camera is already on. And again, you can change settings for a single press of the button or a double press. And a quick tip here for assigning these buttons, if there's only one record mode that you want to shoot in, then you can set every button push to that record mode. So I usually shoot in pro mode at 1440p at 50 frames per second. So if I set all of the button pushes to that mode, then no matter how many times I press the button, in whatever circumstances, whether the camera's on or off, I know that it will turn on or start recording in that mode. The final way that you can shoot with your GoTo is using the app, and this opens up other options for you as well. So first, connect to your phone as we talked about earlier. Once connected, press the camera icon, which will take you to a live image of what your GoTo camera is seeing. Now the app is connected, you won't be able to use the remote, and the remote will say view in app. The main advantage in using the app is that you can actually see what you're shooting which makes it easier to frame up your shot. And on the app, you'll be able to set your shooting mode and you can switch between photo and video at the bottom. Under video, select the shooting mode here by pressing the mode icon. Slide your finger to the left to view all the shooting modes available. And you can change the resolution, the aspect ratio, and the field of view for each option here. And again, slide your finger to the left to reveal all the options available on the menu including changing the color profile and the recording duration. In photo mode, you'll be able to use additional modes such as night shot and star lapse, and also change the field of view, set a timer between three and 60 seconds, and switch to raw photo mode. You can also use manual mode, and you do that by pressing the auto button and then pressing the manual button here. And in manual mode, you can adjust the white balance, the shutter, and ISO manually. And to go back into auto mode, press the manual button and it will bring up the auto button. And you can start recording or take a photo by pressing the yellow shutter button. And any changes you make to resolution or frame rate, etc., will also take place in the charge case. So the next time you open the charge case, you'll see the changes that you've made in there. And in the app, this is also where you can view your recent recordings and photos by selecting the circle here or by pressing the back arrow in the top left of the screen and then selecting album and then camera at the top. This will show all of your photos and videos that are stored on your camera. And there are a few other things you can do in the app if you go to the main settings menu. In here, you can adjust the anti-flicker which prevents screen flicker and flicker from lights. So you can set this to 50 hertz, 60 hertz or auto. You can also calibrate the gyro. So if you are having any issues with stabilization or horizon leveling, then it may be worth calibrating the gyro. So select gyro calibration and follow the instructions. Place the camera on a flat surface and then select calibrate. And the camera gyro will calibrate within a few seconds. And finally in the settings, you can format the memory or check how much memory you have left by selecting camera storage. And you can also select format if you want to wipe the memory and delete all your footage. Other than the charge cradle itself, the camera comes in the box with three other mounts that you can use for shooting. So let's take a look at how to use them. First you have the pivot stand and with this you need to remove the plastic cover and then the pivot stand can be stuck to any clean flat surface. Once on, just give it an extra push to ensure that it has maximum adhesion. And you can then rotate the camera to the position that you want using the ball joint camera mount. To ensure this mount maintains its stickiness in the long term, make sure that you wash the mount to keep it clean of dust and small debris and when you finish using it, replace the plastic cover. You can also use this mount handheld for selfies and vlogging by angling the camera towards yourself 
and holding the round imprint with your thumb or spin it around for POV shots. And for added security, you can also use the wrist strap. Next, we have the magnetic pendant mount, which we simply slip over our head. And for maximum magnetic strength, ensure that the logo is facing inwards and place the pendant under your top. Then simply attach your camera to the mount and this works best with thinner tops like shirts, blouses or t-shirts and make sure you haven't got a button or a zip in the way of the pendant. The final mount is the easy clip. This allows you to clip your camera to a cap or to your top, a pocket or a backpack strap, etc. I found the clip is stronger one way than the other, so make sure you switch the camera around to see which gives you a stronger magnetic connection. And once the camera's in the mount, you can rotate it to the desired position. I found this mount quite tricky to adjust, and if you've got the camera in it and you're trying to adjust it, you'll end up pressing the button accidentally. So adjust it without the camera in it first and then put the camera in. If you have questions about anything in this beginner's guide, please post them in the comments below. My name's Rich, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.